The 7800X3D is currently the best gaming CPU on the market. It offers top tier performance, runs cool, sips power, and allows for reasonably priced system builds since it doesn't require an expensive motherboard or fast RAM to reach its highest potential. If you're considering upgrading to or building a new 7800X3D system for Tarkov, I've tested and shown that RAM speeds don't affect performance in some of my previous videos. If you're interested in seeing those numbers, check out my RAM speed comparison videos by clicking the link in the upper right hand corner. Anyways, while you don't need the fastest RAM kits available, you might still be wondering if capacity matters. I recently tested DDR4 capacities on the previous gen 5700X3D, and you can find that video via the link in the upper right hand corner if you're interested. The TLDR is that there's very little difference between even 16 and 64 gigs of DDR4 with the 5700X3D, maybe about a 5% difference. Today I'm going to be testing 32 gigs versus 64 gigs DDR5 on the 7800X3D in Escape from Tarkov patch 14.9.7. So let's get into it. So let's start with the hardware we're using for these tests. We've got an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D CPU paired with a Radeon RX 6950 XT. This is a Red Devil model. It's all running on a Gigabyte B650 DS3H motherboard. For storage, I've got a 1TB Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. Both sets were using two sticks of RAM, 2x16 for the 32GB set and 2x32 for the 64GB set. For our test environment, we're using medium textures and low shadows in 1440 native. I use medium texture settings to ensure that the load is on the CPU side for this test. We'll be running tests on factory offline to get baseline numbers first and then move on to the real CPU test, Streets of Tarkov. First in offline and then in online mode to get real world numbers. I have set routes that I use on factory and streets for all of my comparisons. On streets, I've created a route on Klimov Street. This is usually where the map is toughest on the CPU. I did three sets of runs and averaged the results for this comparison. All right, so when comparing 32 gigs versus 64 gigs in my factory offline runs, the average FPS difference ended up being about two and a half FPS. It's basically within margin of error. The performance was essentially identical and it felt that way too. So moving on to the streets offline nominal tests, the 64 gigabyte configuration averaged 126 FPS with a 100.6 FPS 1% low, while the 32 gigabyte configuration averaged 120.7 FPS with a 94.6 FPS 1% low. That's just about a 4% difference between the two in offline testing with no AI. Taking the systems online with all assets and AI loaded in, the numbers were nearly identical. The 64 gigabyte configuration averaged 101.2 FPS, a whopping 0.2 FPS more than the 32 gigabyte configuration at 101 FPS. The numbers were essentially identical and within margin of error. I was pretty surprised to see this result because I was expecting at least a small advantage with the 64 gigabyte system. To me, it seems like draw distances have been increased with the recent removal of fog and this has heavily increased the CPU bottleneck on streets 14.9.7. Since the performance is virtually identical with the 7800X3D, whether using 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of RAM, it's pretty easy to determine the value proposition here. Currently, 32 gigabyte DDR5 kits range from about $75 to $110 on Amazon, while a 64 gigabyte kit will set you back around $150 to $200 plus dollars. If you're looking to keep costs down on your builder upgrade, you can rest assured knowing that you're not losing out on any performance with a 32 gigabyte kit. However, I do understand that some people prefer to max out their specs regardless of the numbers, and I've done that plenty of times in the past. After building so many systems over the years though, I now prefer to find the best balance of value and performance. Personally, I'd opt for a 32 gigabyte kit and invest the savings in a better monitor, keyboard, mouse, a more significant future upgrade or just pocket that extra sweat equity. So those are my findings and thoughts. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please quick scope the like button with an MP18 budget build. Thank you to my Purology Pro members for the support. It means the world to me as I continue on this journey to become a full-time content creator. To everyone else, thank you for supporting Purology through your views, likes, and comments. I'm grateful for every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. I love and appreciate you all. That's all I have for this one. It's back to the grind for me and I'll see you in the next video.